Hi, my name is Tim Boyle and uh, welcome to the Founders Identity. This is um, a quick presentation where I'm going to give you 10 tips on how to be found. Um, this is not going to be a comprehensive playbook of how to be found or how to do business development or personal branding. Just some insights gleamed over the past few years about how we can make ourselves found by others. And I'll explain what that means in a minute. But firstly, you know, who am I? Uh, my name is Tim Boyle. I'm the Director of Innovation and Commercialization at ANSTO. ANSTO is Australia's nuclear science and technology organization. Uh, as you can see, I've got, got lots of letters after my name, probably you know, a lot more after my name than in my name, but I tend not to worry about that and just focus on the future. Uh, Nandan is ANSTO's Innovation Center. I'm the founder and director. And uh, Nandan means a look ahead in the Dharawal language, um, which is where Nandan resides in Southern Sydney at Lucas Heights. And what's really cool is that historically, this piece of land where Nandan resides was a meeting place for the um, Darawal people, who are the coastal people, and the Gandangara people, the Highland people. And the meeting circles that you can see in the Nandan logo in the bottom right-hand corner um, are actually you know, from rock engravings that are um, you know, within a few hundred metres of, of where Nandan resides. So we've had this you know, millennia or you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, potentially 100,000 years of people meeting and collaborating on this point in, um, this point of land and sharing knowledge and ideas and we take that forward um, with Nandan which means look ahead in the Dharawal language as I said before. I wear a few other hats as well. I'm Chair of the Alliance of Technology Transfer Professionals which is the peak professional body for knowledge exchange and commercialisation. I'm a Director of Knowledge Commercialisation Australasia. I'm Deputy Chair of Shibis, a local economic development alliance. I'm an adjunct professor with Design Factory in Melbourne at Swinburne University and I'm faculty at Singularity University Australia and I wear a few other hats as well but in interest of time, we won't um, we won't delve into those. I'm waiting for my clicker to, to connect again. So um, I'll start to say, what is it? What is a founder? You know, a founder is someone who establishes something or formulates the basis for something. And uh, in today's context, we're going to create the environment that allows you to formulate the basis for your future, and that means about how to be found. And the future is yours to determine. You might be uh, a startup founder, you could be a research scientist, or you could be a politician. It doesn't really matter. But the ability for people to find you to um, so you can create value for them is yours. And your dreams, it's your choice what you do. Founders is not not a title or a method of design specifically for startups. It applies to all of us and we all can gain something from this session. So, you know, the founder's identity allows you to be found. You know, it's a collection of different things that allows people to find you and for other people who are your champions to refer people to you. Uh, so, not, so the context of what I'm talking about the founder isn't a startup founder. It is that identity that allows people to find you. So being found makes life easy. Now, why do you want to be found? Um, it's a bit like asking why do people go fishing? So you, know, you can go out in your boat, you can dangle your line in and you can wait for the fish to come. But that's a really inefficient way to catch fish. Um, you, know, you need to get a hook and you bait it up, you thread your bit of prawn or whatever onto the hook and you hope the fit, you throw it over the, over the side of the boat and you hope that the fish takes the bait, takes interest and you reel it in. But that requires the fish to find you and you're making the assumption that there are um, they're fish down there, they're interested in what you have to offer. And once you get it, you can reel it in. Um, you can say that a more efficient, efficient way might be to um, you know, throw a stick of dynamite into the water and cause a huge explosion. Um, you know, and that's more efficient, certainly, but it uses a lot of energy and the fish still don't know, uh, you know, still don't know if the fish are down there waiting for you. And then the final piece is, you know, what if you can create a series of circumstances where the fish find you and jump into your boat? And people, so people know who you are and how you can help them and opportunities come to you. This is the found in the founder's identity. And in turn, it makes life easier because you don't have to spend as much time chasing people to make things happen. They find you. And, you know, building, acquiring customers, um, as in, in any walk of life, whether you're an entrepreneur, your existing business, or whatever, finding customers is the most challenging thing. So, the first tip, as a ten tip, not a playbook, but it's the some of the observations. You know, is our perception versus 
the avatar of us that we present to others. So how we view ourselves is often very different from the way that others view us. Uh, this is part of our professional avatar. Now, the good news is that we can develop our own professional avatar, and it's very similar to personal branding, except it's slightly different. Um, so an example of how this can help people relate to you. Um, so have you ever seen Naomi Simpson? She always wears red, and that's part of her personal brand and her personal avatar. It's something that triggers, it's a trigger that, where, that people can use to identify her, and that's really important, and that helps her be found. Um, so the other thing is, as we look, we view ourselves, if you look in the mirror, on the left-hand side of man looking in the mirror and seeing a younger version of himself, and on the right we have um, you know, Wade from Deadpool, and you, know, he, you look in the mirror and what you see might not necessarily be the way others perceive you. And I think it's important that we recognise this and we realise the opportunity that comes from this, that we, we can project a version of ourselves that is, more, um, that is our best version of ourselves. And that's the first tip, is, the, is understanding the way that others perceive you mightn't be the way that you perceive yourself. The second tip, oh, the, well, for, for the second tip, I guess the founder's journey is one of the ways you can judge this personal avatar is really about what people are saying about you when you leave the room. So, you know, we all, we've all been in this circumstance before. We have someone who's in a, in a, in a dinner party and someone's very boisterous. Uh, everyone seems to be getting on with them. As soon as that person leaves, um, they become the topic of conversation and what they're, what's being said about them might be very different to what's being said about them when they're in the room. So having, this, having that found identity is really about what people say. And you want to make sure that when you leave the room, people are talking about you in a positive light. So that's the rounding out the first tip. Second tip. All right. Um, the, you might notice this very clearly. I love this colourful picture. It's fantastic. But tip two, the world deserves to know you. So you, know, you need to do a bit of imagineering here. You decide that you're going to host a party. Right? It's going to be massive, absolute best party you've ever had. There are several things that you need to do. You need to pick out the music for the party, put the decorations out. You need to make sure you're going to have great food and lots of beverages to make sure your guests are full and well lubricated. And you need to make sure that your house is clean. You do all this prep work. And then the day comes for the party, apologies, for the party, and no one shows up. And why isn't anyone showing up? It's because you didn't send the invitations out to your party. You forgot to tell everyone that you're throwing a party in the first place. And we need to let other people know that uh, who we are and why we are awesome and why do people deserve to want to come and try and find us. You know, we all have special talents. We're all very good at doing different things and we have skills that shine. Um, if you've done Clifton Strength Finders, you will know what these are for your particular um, behaviours. And everyone is awesome. But if you don't let people know about it, then people don't know how to find you. Now, some people cringe at the thought of self-promotion, but if you don't do this, then the world won't know how much you have to offer and you won't be found if people don't know how to look for you. So that's, the, that's tip two. Tip three. Authenticity. So we need to be authentic in everything that we do. So what is authenticity? Now, it's not a trick question. Authenticity is very, very hard to articulate. And put it really simply, it's the truthfulness of representation and the commitment that we have to something. Now, authenticity in terms of us as founders means that your founder's identity should always be a truthful reflection of your values. Authenticity doesn't mean politeness. Uh, if your authentic self is that you're super sarcastic, well, that's authentic. But you also need to be kind and respectful to others. You know, we see some people that that might say, you know, that's just the way, you know, they might be quite mean to someone and say, that's just the way it is. Yeah, sure, that's being authentic, but that's also being a bit of, um, say, a dick. I don't like saying that word, but yeah, it's not, it's not nice. And you need to be respectful of others to be really authentic and have others want to find you. So remember, it's that balancing act that complements our professional avatar. And why is it important? It's because the key driver in developing trust. If others don't trust you, then why would they want to find you? So the ability to build trust is super, super, super important in having others find you. So now we're going to talk about infrastructure that sets up and what some of the things that we need. Now, you need to have a photo that depicts an accurate portrait of who you are. And this is part of your professional avatar. 
when I was a student at the dawn of the internet, going back over 20, 25 years ago now, um, you didn't put your real name and photograph on the web because it wasn't a trusted medium and there were lots of weird people out there and there was cases in the paper of um, people stalking people and travelling across the globe to commit all sorts of crimes. But now we've come full circle and you can't build trust and profile online if you don't have a good photo and you don't use your real name and you aren't authentic. And there's a huge body of research out there around social media and it shows people are more likely to interact with you if there's a photo involved. So, you know, you might notice that in your own social media posts, if you have a photo up, more people will comment on that. If there's rich media attached to a social media um, post, you get more engagement with it. And so a photo is very, very important in being part of your founder's identity. Now, you don't need to go to town and hire professional photo photographers. This does need to be an expensive exercise. But the quality of the phone in your camera, the is um, the camera in your phone, sorry, the phone camera, the camera in your phone is really, really good these days. Uh, and it's more valuable that to have a photo than say the technical merits of professional photography. You know, all you really need to do is find some good lighting, recruit a, a friend that you trust to take the photos and trust me, one of them will be good. If you can have the luxury of going and finding a professional photographer, um, yeah, that's great, but it is not essential. And once you have a photo, use it. Use the same one everywhere you go online because people will recognise that photo. If you have a different photo in different places online, you might, you might cause some confusion. So I think this is really, really important. Find, find a photo that depicts you and your professional avatar where that's, you know, everything some wears red clothes. Um, that thing that makes you you and own that and do, and do that repeatedly over and over and over again everywhere across the internet. All right, tip five, you need to have a mission statement. All right, so how many of you have actually have your own mission statement? You know, how do we describe the cumulative peak of all our goals and what are we moving the needle towards? Or do we want to change in the first place? Just like the photo, your mission statement is that critical part of your founder's identity infrastructure. Your mission statement should not be more than three sentences. It should be something that you can memorize and that you can share with people and not in that sort of fin speak disingenuous kind of way you know i'm sure we've all been at a sort of a round table sort of format thing and someone goes i'm blah 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 from startup blah, blah, blah. i'm changing the world by doing this is this, this and it's a bit of a spiel and everyone sort of rolls their eyes and goes oh one of them um, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you do but it's it comes across as not being authentic um, that's just my opinion but a mission statement is something that you could share if you wanted to, but again, you don't need to. You want people to find you and then you want them to follow you. And for that, they, to, to do that, they need to relate to you and that they need to buy into your mission. You know, for example, my mission is you know, to lead, advocate and champion economic development through innovation and commercialization. And I achieve this by leading by example and getting my hands dirty by doing. You know, this is a global mission starting with Sutherland Shire, where I live, and I love the Shire, but stretching to the Australian and the global economy. And this mission is going to create jobs, bring prosperity and a sense of purpose to my community and beyond. So that's my mission. And we should all have something that's like that, that we, that we hang our hat on. It doesn't need to be something that we tell everyone all the time, but it's something that's our guiding principle and that true north for us. You know? And everything I do are goals and tactics towards achieving this mission. Everything, everyone joining the Spark live stream today, you know, will benefit from me completing my mission. So when you're crafting your mission, you need to work out how others will benefit as well. Because if you're not creating value for others and others aren't benefiting, you're not creating impact on society and the economy, then is it a mission worth doing? And that's a question that you need to ask yourself. All right. Tip number six. So your personal board of directors. So. You know, I've been very careful in the picture I've chosen for this as a springboard. And you know, some people might not get this tip. You know, this is an amplification tip, one that will spring you to the next level. Now, this board doesn't need to be a formal board. It could just be some personal mentors that you meet with from time to time. Now, when we have mentors like this, they buy into who we are and what we do. And just like those of us who are parents, in some respects, in some respects, our children's successes are our success. So when we have mentors, our success is also felt by our mentors. 
And if you choose wisely, your personal board will be will be experienced and respected, and in turn have been successful in their past as well. And that is something that can you can leverage and amplify. I've had a lot of success with people on my personal board making referrals, um, speaking highly of me, in, and um, in terms of their social circle and their network, and they help me pull me up the ladder when I give me a leg up the ladder when I need one, and they hold me accountable. Um, as I don't want to waste their time or burn their social and professional capital. So it's very, very important that I have this group of people around me to keep me honest. And the way I see this is, you know, I've got picked very carefully a group of mentors that will help me achieve my aims and objectives and my goals and, and the next steps towards my personal mission across the next period of time. And the way I see standing, we all stand on the shoulders of giants and you need to use this to your advantage. Um, and, and make sure they get value back for helping you along the way. So it's, it's, again, this might not be for everyone and it might not be obvious, but I find this has worked very, very well for me. And this is not about being, having, being famous. This is about achieving your personal goals and, have, achieve, and take, taking those steps towards working on your mission, your, delivering your personal mission and, and going towards that, that moonshot, whatever you want to call it, where you're going. Having those people to help you is super important. So something really, really, and all, all successful people that I've met over time have had an informal personal board of, of directors as their mentors. So something to keep in mind. Okay, number seven, coming into the back end now. So this one should be really quite obvious. You need to have a web presence of some sort. Uh, it may just be your LinkedIn page and your profile there. It may be Facebook or it may be a full website. Um, you know, whatever level you go to will depend on what you're comfortable with. But you need to have a presence so you can be found and where you can send people to find you. I remember the fishing analogy I used earlier. Um, we want fish to be jumping into our boat and not us just sitting around waiting for something to happen with our line dangling overboard. Now, there are lots of resources about websites, which I won't go into. You know, the take home here is that you need to find an anchor for your home on the web and then drive as many people to engage with that as possible. Um, yeah, so you know, I've got a thing here, free versus paid. You need to work out what your mission is, what you want to achieve and why you want people to find you and choose the most appropriate um, platform for you to have your digital presence. But having web presence in digital real estate is critical to your founder's identity and helping being found. And along with the digital real estate is our social media presence. So. You know, tip eight, social media. This is the obvious one. You know, we're getting right into the deep end now. And for many of you, this is going to be a no-brainer. But we often don't think about social media in the context of our founder's identity and professional avatar. We see it more as a responsibility of what we do every day um, as, as uh, interacting with our peers and colleagues. We used to have some digital and virtual ones now. But it's important the way we behave and act in the context of social media to drive people towards us to be found. Yeah, and I see it every day, especially in Twitter, where people who should know better get caught up in negative exchanges that add no value to anyone. Um, yeah, you're not going to win any argument on Twitter. People just you're just going to burn your energy, and people will just tune out. Or they pick up the popcorn and read the thread in amusement because it's two people having a go at each other over something that's not really important. And that's the last thing that you want to be doing. And even worse is that 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 those that are successful then going on and being overly critical of others. Um, which I've seen on social media as well. You know, just if you if you find success, you don't need to go and be nasty to others who are on their path to to, to realizing their best selves and trying to to share how awesome they are. And I don't say that it's great to be authentic, but when you see something that you don't agree with on social media, you know, think about how, may spare your thoughts in that case and think about how you come across to others in that professional avatar. In general, I don't, I don't recommend that you try to be on any more than three platforms. You know, if I look at across all the engagements, that are, all the people around me that are, are being highly successful and being found, and again, these aren't famous people or people with huge presence, but they're all leaders in what they do and, and they're very successful in attracting customers. They have no more than three, three, three platforms for their founders' identity. They might have other ones, but they don't go broadcasting them and they don't engage in them in a public medium. So in most cases, I think actually two platforms is probably the maximum that you should be working on if you don't have 
someone supporting you on social media. I remember social media is a tool and it's a very, very important one. Uh, you'll need to post consistently and yet want your content to be stale. Um, the last thing that you want, especially if someone goes to a Twitter profile page and they see you haven't tweeted in over six months, and yeah, that nobody follows or seeks out stale Twitter accounts. So you want to make sure that you're routinely posting and keeping your content fresh so that people will follow you and engage with you. Because remember, if you're not providing value through these mediums and you're just, um, just, you're just using them as a monitoring tool, to, to get, you're not really engaging with others. So I'll leave it to you to decide on what platforms are important. Um, for me, it's LinkedIn and Twitter for my founder's identity. I have a Facebook account, which I haven't logged into since the beginning of April. I have an Instagram account and that's locked down and I use it for personal things only. Um, but the platforms that you would use will depend on where the people are that you want to find you go. So if you do a lot of work in, in China, uh, WeChat or some other Chinese-based platform might be best for you. Um, say if you're artistic, then um, you know, Etsy and some of these other um, Tumblr, some of these other small creative platforms might be better. So you need to find the one that would depend on the market and the country and jurisdiction of where you want to be found as well. And I don't think we always think about this. We only think about where our friends are. We need to think about where the people we want to find us are. All right. Tip nine, frequency. So we've talked about social media and about um, how, how we, we should keep our things fresh. Pick no, three, no, no more than two, but no more than three different things for our founder's identity. You can have more for your personal life, but to be found, you want to make sure that you're routinely engaging on at least two. Uh, I come from a science organisation, so frequency to me, when I first hear about, always hear about it, the first thing that comes to my mind is the, the spectrum of frequencies from radiation through to microwave and radio and TV, and that's wavelength. Um, but you know, I guess we're talking about frequency of publication and, and sharing things on social. So tip nine, really about how frequently you should publish and what is on social media. I think that you should update at least twice a week at the minimum, but perhaps no more than five times a week because the last thing you want is for those that don't follow as many people as you do, um, you don't want their whole feed just full of you because they'll, they will unsubscribe, they'll unfollow you. Um, now, having said that, you have to have a look at the context of the platform that you're looking at and also the content that you're putting on that platform. Now, like I said a minute ago, uh, posting on Twitter, it's not a great look if you don't post routinely and nobody follows stale accounts. But the other thing to note is the frequency of what you post. This should just use the rule I call the 80-20 rule. So 80% of what you put on social media should be content that is of interest to the people who follow you. So that is things you know, sharing, putting things that you find that are relating to the industry or the market you're in um, or around the products or services you offer, but not necessarily about you. 20% that you should be reserved should be for self-promotion. Remember, self-promotion is okay. You want people to be able to find you. So, okay, 80% of the content that interests your followers and 20% tucked in amongst that is stuff that's about you and showcasing how good and how awesome you are. And that's not too hard to do. We should be able to find, you know, at least um, a post a week about how awesome we are. So that's about 20%. So four posts a week on, on things around your industry or your, your, your startup, your business that you work on or your network. And then one post a week saying how awesome you've done, you are or one thing you've done that's really cool. All right, the final tip coming to the home stretch. So not that kind of frequency. Mistakes. So this is the one thing that really ties into authenticity, right? Recognizing that we don't know everything and we get it wrong and we make mistakes from time to time. Um, basically, you know, if we don't, mis this is all the premise of, um, of startup techniques, design techniques, you know, build, make, learn is around making mistakes early, recognizing that we've made mistakes, learning from them so we don't make them again and becoming better. Um, you know, if you're, you're at school, you learn, you make mistakes in the exam, and then you learn why you made that mistake and hopefully you don't make it again. It's the, the premise, we all make mistakes. It's how we act and behave when we make a mistake that separates us as leaders. And you know, leaders get followed and we want people to follow us so they can find us. Now, when we mess up, you know, here's the playlist of how to do it and coming out the other side a winner. And this is the playlist. playlist. 
this is what might be the most valuable thing that you take away from this um, Spark Festival uh, webinar today. Number one, don't make excuses. Just own it. You don't want to appear, uh, if, you're, you know, if you don't want to appear authentic, if you don't own it, you won't appear authentic and people won't trust you. The second thing is don't blame someone else. That's the worst thing you can do because everyone else will see it. You mightn't see it and you think you're doing it, but it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's obvious to everyone else. And the third thing is take responsibility. And taking responsibility is a combination of four actions. One, you need to apologize. Two, you need to acknowledge that there was a mistake. Number three, you need to make it right. And four, the most important thing is you need to follow through. And if you do these four things, not only will you build trust, but you'll get to deliver value. And, and delivering value is how you get found. So that's the 10 tips in a nutshell. We're coming rapidly to the end of time. Uh, but if you do these, these things, you know, you'll have your founder's identity. And I've got a nice little pie chart here to summarize it. You know, you've got your personal infrastructure, and that's a right, having your photo, your mission statement, and your personal board. You have your digital infrastructure, and that's around the website, the social media, and how frequently you post. And then you have the reputational infrastructure. That's around the perception and your professional avatar, telling people about how awesome you are uh, and authenticity. And then knowing that from time to time you'll make mistakes and what you do there to make it right. And the ratios of those are around 60, 60, 40, as we're seeing in that pie chart, or 35, 35. Um, yeah, you, you, you work out what's going to work best for you. And that brings us to the end of my, my session. I think we have some time for some Q&A. If anyone would like to ask some Q&A. Yeah, okay, so we got a question here from Matt T. Are there any affordable videographer solutions? I found studios to be prohibitively expensive for short explainer videos. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not across this. I've never used a professional videographer. I tend to um, get lighting right myself at home, use my camera phone on a tripod and, and do that. Um, there's a really good solution for doing a um, – sort of editing and that is using a technology called um, Vivavi. It's relatively cheap, it's only a couple hundred dollars or something, and it's really good professional video editing package that's really intuitive and easy to use. Um, I see that Shaquilla has said that Fiverr is a good start for freelance work um, in this space, um, and there's freelancer as well in other places. Um, Carol, loved her idea about mission. Are there any techniques you suggest for building personal mission and turning this into a statement? I think design is the best way about doing this. Um, trying to um, trying to find, you know, using design, working out the, what works for you, what doesn't work, doing a gap analysis. You know, sit down with um, and do maybe a SWOT analysis, get some sticky notes out and do it that way, and then bounce off a friend. I think that's probably the, the best way to um, to work out your mission and, and think about your goals. And, and it mightn't come straight away. It might be something you have to think about. Certainly it didn't come um, to me straight away. Um, Mel and social networks. What social networks are most relevant for social impact companies? Um, I think this is really the, I think, you know, a lot of social impact, you're trying to drive the general population. So I think Facebook might be a really good platform for social impact and Twitter, that's where most people are. Um, Will your session be available as a recording? Um, I'm not sure. Um, let's scroll down. Um, can you please provide a list of your recommended software? Um, Jackie, I'm not sure which software um, you're referring to, um, but you can contact me afterwards. Um, on all these slides is my, um, is my details on how to contact me. You can get me at LinkedIn at Tim P. Boyle or at Twitter at Tim P. Boyle. And, very happy to um, to respond to you there. Um, the video editing software recommendation, sorry, was MoveAvi, M-O-V-A-V-I. And I'm not, not not endorsed by them or paid by them or anything. Uh, I just find that it's intuitive and really easy to use. Um, 
not a fan of motivational materials on social media. How do you come up with fresh content that keeps sharing that's not merely motivational? I think it's about authenticity, it's about sharing what you do and who you are. Um, I think that's really the, the way to, to go about that. I think we're over.